All right, so today we're going to be writing a mathematical model for this dynamic system. So to get started, we have a force U that is being applied to this end. And we have our output of X. So we're looking at how force U affects the movement of the mass of point X. So if we want to think about it and break it down, we can see that we have different components of so springs and dampeners in between the force and the mass on both sides. But on the right side, we have one spring connected at a point that is connected to another spring and a dampener. So we can separate these and we can put a point here in between this spring and this pair of spring and dampener and then we can have our point here at where U and K3 meet as another point. And we're going to do this because we know that when we apply the force U that each of these points are going to have a change in position that are different relative to our change of position on X. So point Z and point Y. So point Z can move more than point Y, which could move more than point Z. So to start writing our differential equation, we can start off with mass times acceleration equals the sum of forces in the x position. <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and label our directions. So we're going to have anything to the right is positive and anything to the left is going to be negative. And there's two different ways you can write this depending on how you want to uh, write the signs. And I'm going to write them both ways so you can see that even though they're different, they equal, they end up equal the same at the end. So let's start off with our mass here and our position X. So we have mass times acceleration. We're going to go ahead and change that to x double dot is equal to our sum of forces. So starting on the left, we're going to have k1, and that is going to be wanting to pull this mass to the left. So it's going to be a minus k1 times x. Now, if we look to the right, we have a dampener and a spring. So we're going to break these up and account for them individually. So we're going to have a plus because this dampener is going to pull this mass to the right. B times its change in velocity. Since dampeners affect the velocity, we're going to have y dot minus x dot. And now for the spring, since it's going to be wanting to pull this mass to the right, we're going to have plus k2 times its change in position. And its change in position is y minus x. Now we're not going to count for K3 in this equation because K3 does not directly affect the change in position of our mass. So we're going to have to write uh, more equations to account for each section and its movement. And now for the second way to do it is we can have our mass times acceleration is equal to our k1 
k1, so minus k1 x. And now we have our dampener and spring. So if we want to keep the consistency of just subtracting everything, we can subtract b, but when we do the change in position, to account for that, we have to flip the x and the y. So now we're going to have x dot minus y dot instead of the y dot minus x dot. And then we have the k2, so we'll subtract it. We get k2 times, again, we have to the flip the y minus x. So we have the x minus y. So we have both different ways that we can write this. So let's go on and find our second equation. So we're going to be looking at this point in the system. So we want to know how this side affects this side. So if we look here, we do the sum of forces are equal to zero because this force has to equal this force for this to move. So we'll have a mine. So we'll have a minus B times its change of position, which is Y dot minus X dot. And a minus k2 times its change in position, which is y minus x. Now these are being subtracted because they are directly on the left side of this point. And that is going to equal k3 times its change in position which is z minus y. So the reason we write it this way is, like I said, is we need to look at this point here and understand that these two forces must be equal to be able to move the mass. So that's why we're making them equal. So on this side, we can write this as keeping the normal subtracting everything is we can have minus b and again we have the x dot minus y dot because we have to flip it minus k2 x minus y and that's going to be equal to minus k3. And here we have to flip on this side to a y minus z. So on one side, we try to keep everything as being subtracted from this mass and its acceleration. And on this side, we're writing it out as the, the forces on each single point and how they react. So now for our third equation is we're going to be looking at this point. So here we're looking at how U is represented by K3. So K3 is on the left, so we're going to subtract K3, and our change of position is Z minus Y, and that is going to be equal to U. Now U is positive because it's pulling it to the positive side. And on the side where we're trying to keep everything negative, we're going to have 
that minus K3, and we're going to have to flip that again, is Y minus Z is equal to U. Now U is going to stay positive because U is a positive force, and we know that the input has to be positive. So U is going to stay positive. But now that we have our three equations, now we can start rearranging and then substituting back in to the other equations. So if we look here, we have that, let's start over here. So we have a minus K3 times Z minus Y is equal to U. Now we have a K3 Z minus Y here. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute that minus b y dot minus x dot minus k2 y minus x is equal to, since we have a minus k3 times z minus y here, we're going to keep the negative and have that it is equal to a negative u. So on this side, we can substitute, since we have a negative k3 times z minus y is equal to u, we can just directly substitute k3 y minus z in. So we're going to have a minus b x dot minus y dot minus k2 x minus y is equal to, direct substitution is u. All right, so now we look at this equation and how we can substitute it into our first one. So we have a plus b and a plus k in our first one, but over here we have a minus b and a minus k. But we also have a minus u. So we could either rearrange or multiply the whole thing by a negative 1, which will give us a b y minus x dot minus k2 y minus x is equal to u. Now, plus. So we have a b plus k equals u. Now we can match up here because we have a plus b plus k. So this now can all become u. So then we have mx double dot equals minus k1x plus substituting that in u. Same here. A little less work because it is already in the same form that our top equation is in. So we can directly substitute that into mx double dot is equal to minus k1x plus u. Now it's plus because our minus b and minus b are all together. So u equals the minus b minus k. So that gives us the mx double dot equals minus k1x plus u, which is coincidentally the same as this side. So moving k1 over to isolate u, we get mx double dot equals, we get mx double dot plus k1x equals u. And same here, we get mx double dot plus k1u. k1x equals you. So there are the final answers. Depending on which way you solve for it, you do get the same answer. You just have to think about how your signs are going to affect the change of position and its point of movement.